the biggest news I think for uh, pediatric glioma most recently has been the identification of the histone 3.3 mutations in, in diffuse intrinsic brainstem and other non-brainstem uh, gliomas at a very high frequency. And um, the, 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 this is a great discovery, and these, these actually may be driver mutations. There's a lot of preclinical work ongoing right now. The, the, the hope is that we will soon have therapeutics that will target this mutation, a demethylase inhibitor, a Jumanji D3 uh, demethylase inhibitor, and, and everybody's working very quickly to try to develop a clinical drug. Uh, there is a tool compound that works preclinically uh, from GSK, but other companies are now looking at these demethylase inhibitors. It's a very complicated field to talk about methylation profiles and methylation marks and how to modify methylation and chromatin remodeling, but this has also uh, spawned interest in adult glioblastoma to look for these same sort of uh, methylation marks as well um, and targeting strategies, and we have some preliminary data as well in, in glioblastoma that this may also be uh, important. As I've mentioned before, um, you know, there's been disappointment in the adult glioma phase three trials for bevacizumab showing no survival benefit. But, but more recently, we've, we've been told again, and, and it was brought up before, that Novo TTF, these tumor treatment fields, uh, actually may have some clinical benefit. Uh, this was the initial study looking at it in, in recurrent glioblastoma, and I, I think you're all familiar with this, um, where patients were randomized to have this device placed on their head for 18 hours a day or longer uh, compared to physicians' best choice of therapy showing what looked to be at least an equivalence um, uh, and certainly a non-inferiority to using uh, chemotherapy uh, in, in the setting of relapse disease. It's not very effective therapy, but it's not worse than other therapies, which suggests that there's some biological uh, uh, relevance to it. And we just heard uh, several months ago that the phase three study in newly diagnosed disease, at least based on an interim analysis, uh, is seeming to suggest that there may be some impact on both progression-free and overall survival. And I would emphasize that this is preliminary data. It's not been finalized. There has to be a lot more time spent to look and see if these curves, particularly in survival, will change. These are estimates. Um, but but it may be that there is a biological um, uh, uh, effect in terms of using Novo TTF. Uh, as I mentioned before, this is an inhibitor of mitotic spindle apparatus, and, and it has almost a classic cytotoxic kind of uh, profile in vitro when you, when you do these kinds of studies. Um, so, so it may be that there, there is another venue for treating these patients. Now, the, the field will encompass a larger area of brain than um, uh, perhaps the radiation fields. And, uh, of course, we know that there is infiltrating tumor disease beyond the T2 flare. I mean, the T2 flare is not the only area of tumor. And it is that infiltrating margin that ultimately uh, uh, develops and, and, and kills patients. So this is very interesting. We'll have to wait and see how this plays out um, in terms of Novo TTF. But a lot of people were biased against it. But I think we just need to be unbiased and look at the data as it matures and see if it makes um, sense to consider this for our, our patients. It's not yet approved for this indication in newly diagnosed disease, but it is a pretty interesting uh, observation.